So here, here's what I wanted to do because um, like I really I wanted to kind of start at the beginning. Like a lot of our um our viewers and people who follow us are also people in the industry, um, aspiring songwriters and everything. Uh, and you got this phenomenal project that you just dropped, Bad Hair Day. And I want to get to that, but I definitely want to also talk about the 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 journey and the path to getting where you are today. And I, I really wanted to kind of start at the beginning. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to start at the beginning um, because you got millions of fans, millions of people are familiar with your work. Um, a lot of the records that you've done, um, not everyone knows like that, that your mom was a, a phenomenal singer in her own right. And yes. I want to kind of start with, with the, the be very beginning. Like, how was it like growing up? Did you, were you always surrounded by music growing up? Um, and to what degree were you surrounded by music growing up? Well, my mother is a phenomenal singer. Um, she is like the best singer ever. <laughs> and she taught me everything I know about singing from writing a verse to how to write songs to like melodies. Like this is a first verse, this is a hook. Like to how to harmonize, do runs. Like I used to be horrible at harmonizing with my ear. <laughs> like <laughs> I would fall off every time. So she definitely helped me with that. And um, and my mom has traveled. I'm trying to get this lotion. I'm at a host in my hotel. And I'm so mad because my hands are dry. And none of the lotion was like helping. <laughs> so I'm like, let me try a different kind because this other one is so cheap. Okay. This new one is working bomb. Okay. So um, <laughs> she's um, traveled with Chaka Khan, Luther Van Dross. Um, she's worked with the likings of Stevie Wonder, U2, um, Tears for Fears. Um, I mean, I can't even think of everyone, but everyone. And she's traveled and done huge concerts. She's written. My mom's been on the radio. My mom knows that whole feeling. She had a really big record deal with Warner Brothers. So it's just kind of like she can just walk me through and guide me through. And she's helped me a lot where I felt like, oh, this is just too much pressure, too much. I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. And I really did quit for like four years or something like that and my mom's just like you gotta get back at it keep going don't stop blah blah blah, blah. and um that's what you know she's my big motivation okay and so and to, with that it's like i guess there's this difference between the music and the industry so your mother was there for you and really like helped you hone your skills and taught you like songwriting and how to harmonize and all of those things to what to what degree would you say you were um, exposed to the the industry growing up? Like the the, the I was exposed the... to it like my whole life because mm -hmm. um, my mom is a singer and everyone around me just did something like all her friends were in music and were like traveling and singing and doing their thing and then thank you somebody said the album is fire thank you so much. Um, yeah, and like stuff like that. And so it's just definitely like all in my blood. And then, you know, um, I was around actresses. My cousin's an actress, Megan Good. So um, just going with her on sets and stuff. So it's like when I started getting the, the fame and the attention and, you know, being on a show and just being a songwriter and just getting love and respect, it's like almost like I was used to the game. So I knew how to like receive it and handle it because I grew up around so much of it. Right. And so I think that that kind of puts you in an interesting position, like as far as someone as an artist, a singer, um, this this thing where people who don't have that upbringing, where they're always surrounded by it, is like they're, they're, to a large extent, it's just kind of the dream and it's not a reality. So they always got to have that plan B. Yeah. Uh, and so you said there was a time period of time where you, for four years, where you just pulled back what what would you see yourself doing if not in the music industry well that was the problem um i was like i don't really know how to do anything else because songwriting came to me naturally like i was 13 14 years old you put a beat on i hear a melody and that's how i knew how to write songs because people would be like yo how do you hear that that's so dope like people i respect the producers my mom of course um, and I just would hear it. Like, you could put a beat on, I'd naturally be like, you should go like this, whatever, whatever, and I start singing or whatever. And so 
I just kind of was like, okay, now that I'm not doing music, like, what would I do? So I took that time to, like, figure it out. But I still was writing songs because that's, like, was a form of income, a form of income. And then it's, like, something I'm really good at. But as far as, like, music, I had just lost my record deal with Timberland. And I never came out. I never got a chance to flop, do bad, not do numbers. Nothing ever happened. It had nothing to do with me. It was just like he lost his label. So everyone under his label lost their deal. So I went into like a depression after that because it was my first major deal. And I was just like, you know what? Um, I'm cool. I don't want to do this. And so that's how um, I ended up taking a break. But I needed that. We have to take our mental space, our healing time. Um, I came back better than ever. I dropped a mixtape and people were like super receiving it. And then I dropped King Me Too. People were super receiving that. And then from then on, I've just been like, you know, just dropping little EPs, little mixtapes here and there. But this is the most focused um, project I've ever put out where I'm actually focused and really shooting hella content. I'm actually in Atlanta right now. Um, I shoot a video in like two days. Um, so it's like way more focused than I've ever been. Okay. And I think I can definitely hear that in the music. Like um the your first mixtape um was was a good project. And it's just like listening to your evolution over time. Um like you got a rich catalog, like from that from that first from that first mixtape, you've been consistent, like um Thank you. with dropping music like on average every year even when you took a gap like you hit them with two the next year like <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 no thank you that means a lot look and that's another thing i took another break after i had my baby mm -hmm. so you know life brings us things sometimes we don't have full control i mean we never have gods in control first of all but we never um get to we just don't know what's gonna happen i didn't know i was gonna get pregnant um i didn't know i was gonna have kids <laughs> mm -hmm. so i had my son and after that, you have, like, if you have a C-section, you know, you you have a different type of healing. Sometimes it takes longer, it takes some months. Then, you know, whatever it is, you have to get into mommy mode. And so I literally took two years to drop Bad Hair Day from dropping strength. And I didn't even promote strength because I dropped it pregnant, like, on the day I had Ocean, I think. So it's a lot that goes with my story, and everybody has a story. But now I, like, you know, can work out, got my focus together again and that's why i can really focus on bad hair day and go hard and you know it's charting the fans are showing love it's on the radio and it's just making me want to like go even harder so shout out to my ricas <laughs> <laughs> so here's a here's a question that i got for you as a as a songwriter right um like you get you got your first placements early on like mm -hmm. How was it when you when you landed your first first placement with a with an artist that that you look that you were a fan of their work? It's exciting, you know. Um, when I wrote on Jealous with Beyonce, I was like crying. I was so excited when she took the record. I actually wrote on Drunk and Love too. Um, people don't know this, but it was such a political thing with details and um, you know the way I think that. He felt and he liked me and it turned really crazy. This is the first time I've ever even really talked about it. Um, but I just accepted the fact that I'm not going to get what I deserve on this because of him only. And I just accepted that. But on Jealous, I was like, you're not going to do it with two records. So right. you're going to get this right. And that's why I was credited on Jealous because I wrote it with details. And then him and Beyonce went and Beyonce wrote you know, changed a lot of the lyrics. She's a prolific songwriter. She's super amazing. I admire her. So um, just to be a part of Beyonce is like super amazing um, to have written and worked with and been able to actually even do vocals with and give vocals to, not that he even needs it, but Chris Brown um, has been a super honor. I love working with him. He's so talented. So just to name a few, those are two people I really love working with. Okay. So now, and now this brings up an interesting question coming off of that, right? As yeah. a, as an artist, because you're also a phenomenal artist, not just a songwriter, right? Thank you. How do you how do you feel as an artist about um, other people 
writing for you? Like if someone pitches a song and you got a reference track, like does how do how do you feel about that personally? Because you 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 really cut your teeth in the songwriting, and that's like a, a very um, big strength that you have over other singers. Like, how do you feel about um, having other people submitting songs for you? Well, um, first of all, somebody just asked about the Bad Hair Day hats. They're coming. They should be launched in the next week or so. So um, I know y'all been asking me. I know you guys been seeing my hat with the Bad Hair Day, not this one, but the other one. So they will be launched. So y'all just stay tuned for that. I got y'all. And um, people have submitted songs to me before in the past, and I've taken them. I've taken full records that I loved, and um, I've actually just changed, like, a couple words if I felt like it or a few sentences or whatever just because I felt like it would strengthen the record. And um, I'm down for that if it's a dope record. A dope record is a dope record. I don't always have to write it. If it's dope or it tells my story or I relate, um, Act of Fool is one of those records, actually, probably the only one on Bad Hair Day that – was given to me and then I just went in and changed a few lyrics but I really loved it as is it was just so dope and I related because it was my story so you know um see I moon Breland Marquise and everybody I got in with and it was just really dope to work with some dope ass songwriters so I'm definitely down for that but for the most part, Bad Hair Day is my personal journal, my personal diary. So I had to write it myself because, I, like, it's my story. <laughs> no, it, it listen, and it, it it very much feels that way. Like, so, like I said, from your catalog, like consistently, it was like very consistent. Like earlier on in your catalog, like um, with the first mixtape and the EP, it was like a, a collection of good records. It was a, it was a display of talent. And then um, I would say with Hello, it, um, with the first album, it was more like, okay, they were more thematic. Like it, it was a collective body of work. But this this Bad Hair Day really feels like a narrative. It feels like a snapshot of a portion of your life. Like even just the order that the songs go into. Um, so first of all, you are an amazing listener. <laughs> And I don't know if your girlfriend told you that or whatever, but you clearly pay attention. That's a big compliment. But um, because you're absolutely right, you know, from the order of the songs, um, you know, it, it tells, and I did that purposely. So it tells a story from like, all right, I'm here at the mirror. This is going on. I heard you acting up. I'm about to act up. All right, now I got a plot twist where you check out what just happened after that. Now this, now that. So um, yes, this is my versions of my Usher confessions. This is my story. <laughs> and um, the other one, projects were just about good songs. Like, oh, this shit is dope. I'm about to just write over this beat, Petty. Um, from Nishay Pearl, this is that, like whatever, just like, oh, I'm just gonna write dope records. Bad Hair Day is like, my mood at the moment was a bad hair day, which I feel like that's what life is like. You never know when you're gonna have a messed up hair day or you're not, you know, it's just life. I don't even care if you're right. your hair, you're just not always gonna like it. And that's how life is. And that is the, um, basically the overall synopsis of the story of being, having a bad hair day. The the um the album and in, in to me a little bit it feels like um uh, what's the record makeup it feels like you took makeup and extrapolated it <laughs> and made it like a full project from that feeling that I got from makeup yeah because makeup's an honest record too it's very like um it's very stripped down like bad hair day so that's probably why um, makeup is just like you know uh, you know would you love me like the same if I don't have this makeup on, if I don't look like this every day, if I'm like this is basically the um, vision I have of real love. It's like when you're not always so pretty or we have wrinkles or whatever it is, like, you know, are you gonna love me? Are you gonna hold me down if I'm broke, if I'm this, I'm that, like that real ride or die love. And um, yeah, Bad Hair Day is all that. It's definitely talking about ride or die love. Yeah. Now, so for those um, who are familiar with the show, Love and Hip Hop LA, uh, right? Hollywood, I'm sorry. Uh, well, what I was about to say was, um, it's it's a very interesting thing with the the um, with the whole situation is because as fans who are familiar with the show and watch the show, right? You 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 have this narrative laid out in your music now. It's like for the fans, it's they 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 have insight a little bit more insight into the lyrics. So 
with them listening and trying to pick apart like oh that she's talking about that situation right there like how do you how do you feel that um the i think that's a that's a dope thing for the fans but how does being on the show impact your creative process um <laughs> well i mean i try not to regret any of my experiences that i've had because i feel like okay that's just a part of life but i feel like i don't really feel like that show impacted my career i feel like it actually set me back because mm -hmm. you can't really um you can't really focus on music which that's a big reason why i wasn't dropping I wasn't dropping my best body of work. And even when I was, I wasn't pushing it. And I couldn't because it's like, I remember when I was on tour, I was on a radio tour for Don't Take It Personal, was charting at number like, I think 26, 27, like things were like really, really moving. And Love and Hip Hop was going crazy. Like, we need you, you film tomorrow. You're supposed to film tomorrow. This is our biggest scene. Like it says contractually that we have first dibs or whatever whatever so it was just like i would have to fly back and forth which was really straining and stressful i would fly back to film for a day then go meet everybody in atlanta or wherever we're at for the next part of the tour and then try to come back again and it was like super duper hectic um oh my gosh this girl's texting me i'm trying to tell her um yeah and so it was just a lot so i feel like if anything it made me lose focus because i was focused on the drama definitely and so, and that's why I wanted to kind of touch on that because I think a lot of times people see the like those type of situations, and it's like, yo, it's it's exposure. But when you're someone who's not just looking for attention and you're trying to put out great music, like how having all of that going on can also impact your creative process, especially for someone who who who's who is a writer, like like. And, and I know in, in meticulous about your writing and like the, the themes that you want to put forth and the ideas. Um, so I definitely just wanted to, to touch on that. Now, um, let, let's talk about this new project. Let's talk about Bad Hair Day. Yeah. Amazing project. Like Thank I've been you. Seeing, <laughs> people been talking about it, like uh, all through the comments, like, listen, this is this is like, like I said, this one, um, I, I really feel like this is this is a, a, it has the makings of a really breakout project for you because like i said the it's it's more of a narrative Thank and you. so um how do you feel like as far as with the the story that you're telling um how do you feel that it relates to your your everyday the the experiences of everyday women I just feel like it's not a song on their day. People can't relate to men or women. Everybody's been cheated on. I don't care if it was when you're 15, 16, 17, if you're 25, if you're 48, if you're 69, you've experienced it. Everyone in the world, it's impossible to run from it. Man or woman has had that experience. Um, everyone doesn't have a kid, but a lot of people do. So a lot of mothers and a lot of fathers relate to being like, yo, I'm holding my baby down. I've had men come to me as well. Like, yo, my woman fucked up. She did this, this, or that. I'm a single father. Thank you for this album. So it relates to men as well. Um, everybody has had a broken heart. Doesn't always have to be cheating. You can be just somebody not putting in as much effort as you or, you know, got comfortable. Everybody's been in a situation where they felt like somebody got a little too comfortable. Like, oh, they got you now. They worked all this hard. And now I've had really, really big celebrities tell me that there was someone and they got too comfortable. Celebrities, you would think, how the fuck do you get comfortable with da-da-da? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they like, you have the person that everybody wants, you know? So that just shows me that that's all across the board. So the hair day is all across the board, like, I feel like everyone can relate to at least a song, if not every song. So that's what made me feel comfortable. And it's me being vulnerable. Um, since I was like, first started doing albums and stuff, my own projects and mixtapes, I said I wanted to do a project called Vulnerability. The reason I wanted to be called Vulnerability is I wanted to just like strip down and really like tell my story. I've lost my twin sister and just the things I've been through. The interesting thing is I ended up telling that story on Love and Hip Hop. That's how I was able to drop the DM. But like, again, I didn't get to push it properly because of the stuff I was just talking about. But 
So I feel like everyone can relate to bad hair day. It's impossible not to. Now that's so I, I definitely um can agree with that. I feel like the the Marriott record, um, like just it it fit perfectly in behind Crash and Planes. Like so as soon as I put it on, Crash and Planes catches my attention, but then Marriott takes it up to a to the next level. Mm -hmm. And and the theme of the Marriott, can you go into where you were mentally when you were writing Marriott? I was sad. I was in pain. I just had a baby. I was having a little bit of postpartum. Um, not just just, but just just. I mean, Ocean's still super young, so I still just just. <laughs> so I just had a baby. And like, just feeling like, okay, I'm not happy in my relationship. I'm going to move. Where am I going to go with an infant child? And just not knowing where to start and pick up and all this stuff. So I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to stay at the Marriott. And when I went and stayed at the Marriott, I had all these experiences. I had fun at the same time because my best friend came and stayed with me. But then at the same time, I was sad. So my emotions were like up and down and I was like changing diapers in the hotel. And so um, I decided to write about it. I was like, yo, I'm going to write a song called Marriott. Like, I'm just going to do it. Fuck it. And as soon as I said it, it felt like, oh my gosh, that's crazy to even say. Like, why do you want to tell everybody your business? Like, why not? Be all up in my business anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if y'all go be in it, I might as well tell it how yes, it's I supposed to be told. Yes, I my story without edits and big yeah. shit so that you can see the real lyric and not, like, just me in a confrontation because I'm not even really confrontational. And then me, like, why did this part get edited out where I defended myself and y'all would know the truth and it's completely gone and now it's just me against the world proving myself. Like, no, 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 that used to frustrate me. So it's just the stripped down real Lyrica and that's where Marriott came from. I was at the Marriott and I'm like, I'm gonna write about it. And I think it was like, I wanna say it was this the second verse, the third verse. It was like the, um, talking about the someone else who's there to give you that attention. And then when it transitioned into plot twists, Yes. And I was like, it's just like, grab your popcorn. This is a movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's, let's talk about plot twists, which I think is like, um, definitely got to be next up. Like as far as the, the, the singles goes. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my team. So, what, so what, right. what, 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 where were you at with plot twists? What, what was the inspiration behind plot twists? Um, Plot twist is just what it is about like you leaving someone that you feel like at the time isn't realizing the appreciation of y'all's relationship or maybe they got comfortable or maybe they're going through their own postpartum daddy issues, whatever it is. I'm not comfortable. So I'm about to dip. And when I dipped, um, then I like, it's just a story about like, meeting someone or having a friend who's like there for you basically and um the twist is that they're like yo i would never do that or i would never do this or i would be more of this if you gave us if you gave us a shot oh shoot and um that's like the concept so i mean you hear the lyrics plot twist you push me in the arms of someone so it's basically just telling that story no problem and so I think it was something that interesting that you that you just touched on as like uh this is kind of a, a level of maturity that that I think you can find throughout the project is you pointed out that yo, they might be going through their postpartum daddy issues at the same time. So even by you not seeing eye to eye with someone, you can understand that someone um has their own things that they're going through. And I th I feel like that's kind of uh something that I, I noted in the project as well. Like sometimes you like when it comes to female artists, especially in R and B, some men feel like, yo, they're just bashing men or whatever. But I think you take a very nuanced approach to all of the topics and themes that um insightful enough that even if we don't agree or not seeing eye to eye right now that you like people have their own things going on. And I feel like that's kind of a, a underlying tone for the whole project where even when you touch on certain things, um, you take a more nuanced look to, to to the topics and to the themes that it comes across as much more compassionate as opposed to like where sometimes um, 
artists, they, it sounds like, oh, they're men bashing or whatever. It's like, no, this is just someone being honest about a relationship and their, their feelings. Yes. And I think that's something that you, that you uniquely do. Oh, thank you. I appreciate um, your support and the fact that you really listen um, to the music and the project and even the old stuff and the new stuff and you, you understand what's going on and stuff. But like, yeah, I mean, I just thought about that. Like, yeah, you, I mean, I've thought about that in the past, but you just never know, like, um, if someone is dealing with their own daddy issues or what it is and a new father, too. So I don't know how that exists, but I'm sure it does because I say men get their like version of their periods, too. <laughs> But whatever it was, it just wasn't working for me. So that is the reason why I left, and that is the reason how I wrote Marriott. Definitely, definitely. So um, what I wanted to do is, if it's all right with you, I wanted to open it up, open up some questions for a few of the people that uh, yeah. that are in here. Let's see. We got a couple questions. Uh, Dunny Nicola, is there anything you regret? Hmm. That's a pretty open one. <laughs> yeah, I try not to regret, but of course in life you'd be like, damn, I wish I did that differently. <laughs> Let's just say it's certain things, even on the album, I guess I'll just say like, oh, I wish I did maybe a little different or, you know, mm. this is part of life, certain things you just, but, but I try not to have any regrets because I feel like everything is a lesson. If I didn't go through what I went through, I wouldn't have bad hair day to talk about. I wouldn't have such a um, real heartfelt, emotional album to talk about so no not really okay let's see um pull up another one in general what is what is your writing process to write these hits you know i just go out for what i feel um when i hear the track i'll just be like like when i wrote brain on bad hair day i just it's really weird like i saw a picture of a brain somewhere mm -hmm. in the studio right and i was like yeah that'd be a dope song concept I mean, a dope title, I'm going to say. But I didn't know how what the concept was going to be yet. Because obviously, as soon as people hear brain, they think nasty or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I flipped it. Like, use your brain to stimulate my mind, basically, more than just sexually. Because that's all men think. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this to her and do that. What it's like, okay, but he, you could actually really make a girl fall in love with you with just some bomb-ass conversation. That's how these niggas in jail be getting these girls. <laughs> just sitting on the phone with them and you wonder how you being loyal at home. Like, I'm going home and talk to my baby. Woo -woo -woo. That's the reason why. Um, shout out to the producer, 88 Fingers, who produced um, Brain. I think he's on here, but I couldn't scroll back down. But, um, yeah, so just the, wherever the track takes me, whatever I'm feeling, mood I'm in, I write about it. And y'all also go to my mom's page, Lyrica Garrett, and y'all stream her new album, Ready, which is out right now. The link is in her bio. You'll love some good, soulful R&B. <laughs> that, that's, um, brings, it brings up an interesting question, something that you just said. Um, when it comes to the records, do you more often than not come up with the concept or do you come up with the melody first? Like when a, when a, when a come track the, comes on. I come up with the melody and concept. The lyrics is what comes last. So usually it's the um, melody mm -hmm. and um, the melody first. I would say melody first, then concept. For brain, okay. concept, then melody. So it kind of depends. But on brain, the particular song I was just talking about, it was it was concept no damn now you make me forget it was title then mm -hmm. concept then melody okay okay read more questions somebody said okay i mean we trying we we, we yeah we. <laughs> they saw the man <laughs> uh, -huh. uh how's how's uh motherhood now that you're in a better space motherhood is awesome i cannot wait i'm out of town right now so i can't wait to see my baby um, I just love him. He's just a joy. He, <laughs> when he be doing stuff that I want him to do, I go, boy. And it's just naturally, I be like, boy, don't give me that boy. And I say, boy, like that. And one morning recently, I was sleeping. He was in the bed with me and he tapped me and woke me up and he said, boy. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I can't do with you. And he just does like really cute stuff. Like I have the picture of me and Adia um, from my album, Adia from when we were babies in my room, in one of my rooms. And he like went in the room. 
excuse me. Bless you. In my nose. Um, he went in the room and he like pointed to her, like, that's my dog. And he kissed her, he goes, Mwah. and then he turns to me at my picture and goes, Mommy. And I just was like, Wait, you've been here before. Like, obviously, you and Adia have a relationship. That's my twin sister. Because he kissed her picture, and I just was like, Wow, I can't. Right. So let's see. Uh, who's your favorite artist out right now? Who who who's heavy in your playlist? I mean, I love a lot of artists, a lot of new artists, a lot of artists from the past. I mean, obviously, I mean, I listen to Sade a lot. She relaxes me. I love Aaliyah. Um, let's see, Sade, Aaliyah, Isley Brothers. Um, which I haven't listened to none of this music because I've been listening to Bad Hair Day like crazy. So I haven't been like tapped in like I usually am. But um, all the way to like Drake is one of my favorite artists. Um, and then I like, you know, I like a lot of people. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Though. As, um, as an artist through this pandemic, what did you do to strengthen yourself for your music? I started working out. It's a new journey, but I got a trainer and really started trying to like take that serious because it's something I've always wanted to do. And I'm tired of making excuses like, oh, I'm up and down with my weight because I had a baby or because of this or being in the studio late nights, eating snacks, blah, blah, blah. So just trying to be more focused um, with stuff like that. And um, just like trying it's hard because we can't do the things that we're used to doing in this pandemic. Like I can't just go out and perform. If I do, I have to go way out to somewhere that's open and then that's even sketchy. So it's just like, eh, super hard. Um, cause we can't promote. I would be everywhere with bad hair day right now, <laughs> but just getting closer with God and being more focused and just learning like just different stuff about yourself and all these no, this this has been a great time for that. Just like the personal development and, and growth, and having that That's quiet time. When COVID happened, it was like meant for us. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, here's another good one. How many times do you record a song before you are in love with it? Is it the, is it generally on the first go round, or do you do you often re-record? It doesn't always have to be like a lot of me recording it a lot. Like I just love it. I love it. I don't have to keep recording it all the time. Interesting thing, I know I keep talking about my brain, which is so funny because certain questions reminded me of that record. I recorded that record twice before it got y'all got what y'all got. So that was the only one where I could say I like and Marriott too. I kept going back to it and doing rewrites. Like, what's your favorite song personally, like that means the most to you? And then what song do you think is like has the most potential? Like you just think is the best song on the project. From from an industry commercial from achievement standpoint, I would say one of my favorites, and I feel like is the um, Marriott is also one of my favorites. But then those are the ones y'all heard right away. So if I went into the album, I love Brain, I love Lifted, I love Notice Me. Ooh. I mean, don't ask me, I'm biased. I love the whole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that I think that was one of the things, like when you um, bring it back to Bray, like when I first listened to the project, um, like I was doing something else when that song came on. So as a guy, I'm like, hold on, what you talking about? <laughs> so so I, had go, I had to go, I had to go, we listened to it, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you got my attention. And then you got my undivided attention. <laughs> so <clears throat> I definitely think it was a, a, a well-written record off of the project. And I think it, it kind of underscores just your consistency with wordplay and themes the, throughout your whole catalog. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate yes. you taking this time out. I know you got um, a, a full schedule. Um, yes. is there Thank any... you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, um, no problem. And this has been a freaking awesome interview, and I appreciate you. And um, thank you, y'all, for all the questions. I see y'all's comments. Y'all love Marriott. Girls have fun, brain, 
all this stuff. So um, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yo, how do we not talk about girls have fun? <laughs> like that was, be next, I think that's another interview. one. <laughs> That one is after um I would say after like on the on my list, um after plot twist is is girls have fun. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, plot twist was your favorite. Yeah. Yes. I shot a video to that, so that's next. Okay. So uh I will I'll see you Thursday at the uh, listening party. Okay. I'll see you soon. All right, appreciate you tapping in. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.